Thank you. I now call to order the MWPA Executive Committee meeting of January 4, 2024. Hi, Megan. <laughs> Martina, can you please call the roll to ensure that we have a quorum present? Absolutely. Director Goins? Director Rodoni? Present. Director Hilliard? Present. Director Kurtz? Present. President McMillan? Present here. And that looks like everybody from the committee is in Thank attendance you. today. Hi, Anne. Good morning. Agenda adjustments. I will entertain requests to adjust the order of the agenda. Any requests? Hearing none, number four, open time for public expression. The public is welcome to address the executive committee at this time on matters not on the agenda that are within the jurisdiction of the committee. Please be advised that pursuant to government code section 54954.2, the committee is not permitted to discuss or take action on any matter not on the agenda. Comments may be no longer than three minutes and should be respectful to the community. Please silence your cell phones during the meeting and mute your microphone when you are not reporting out. Martina, is there any public comment? If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on items currently not on the agenda, please raise your hand in the reactions. And for anyone joining by phone, please press star nine to raise your hand or star, and star six to unmute yourself. And there are no hands for comment. Thank you. Number five, executive officer's report. Mark Brown will present the executive officer's report. Mark. Good morning and happy new year, everybody. Uh, welcome back to, after a month off of meetings for the most of the MWPA. Um, but as you'll see in my presentation here real quick, not everybody had the month of December off. We are in work plan development uh, season now. So the ATC and the operations have both met. And um, I would say that they did a great job of continuing the momentum that they had from the 22, 23, wait, the 23, 24 work plan development. That moment momentum has carried into the 24, 25. Awesome engagement, some great discussions. Um, I'm especially pleased with some of the strategic vision that the operations committee is providing because um, each year we ask them to determine what the, what the strategy for the for that work plan is and and the conversation that occurred and i think the additions of some of the um, strategies that we'll be using for 24 25 is awesome um, um i won't daylight that yet just because they still have some vetting to do but i think you guys will be really happy um on the insurance front if you noticed um, um the california department of insurance authorized the 20 percent increase of insurance rates for state farm 20 percent sounds large um, I'm a State Farm uh, customer, and I'll I'll be honest with you. I'm actually pleased that it's only 20%. Uh, the more that I have been researching the insurance issue in California, um, Prop 103 did a great job of keeping insurance rates down for our residents. And while my opinion may be unpopular, this is what my opinion of it this is, is that, well, this is an opinion. California has the lowest insurance rates in the nation or amongst the lowest. And if you look at the risks that Californians have in their home insurance environment, it's amazing that we have the lowest insurance rates. So um, in order to make the insurance industry survivable, these, these types of rate increases are um, probably necessary. Some insurance industry experts were saying they think that the rates are 30 to 40% low. So when I saw an increase for 20%, I was actually pleased knowing that um, more than likely I'm going to continue to maintain my homeowner's insurance. That's the downside. The upside with the approval of State Farms, and they're, they're the first insurance company outside of the California Fair Plan, I believe that's the CDI has approved the rate changes. With those rate changes also comes the discounts to go with safer from wildfire regulations. I haven't dug into what type of discount State Farm is going to be offering, but this is in alignment with how we've been managing our um, inspection program is that we have been both negatively and positively documenting items that are within the California safer from wildfire regulations. That way residents can show that they meet some of these regulations. They can take their report and to their insurance company and be able to get discounts from the insurance company. So um, I would imagine we're going to we're going to start seeing CDI approving more and more of these rate increases, and perhaps 
and State Farm's been um, honest about this, and so some of the other um, insurers that stopped writing new policies in California, they said this is a pause rather than a permanent stop of writing new policies. So this type of increase for State Farm may lead them to opening up um, new policies again. We'll see. Um, you see that uh, the next item is planning for fire resilience in coastal Marin County. This, and you see uh, a quick screenshot of the flyer that went out. This is in partnership with Cal Poly San Luis. It, they have a program where they are going throughout the state and providing um, training webinars and or in-person meetings. This is actually going to be a two-step two process. This one for January 19th is a webinar. And it's going to be how we are planning for our work within the coastal zone and maintaining our environmental compliance um, in specific regard to coastal zone regulations. And we'll be um, talking about um, the work we're doing, but also a public works plan, which is part of the coastal zones um, process that Santa Cruz and San Mateo have really good PWPs that we're emulating to try to get um, approved for us. And so we're going to be bringing those folks into the conversation as well. Sometime in February, we're actually going to have an in-person training um, out in West Marin, probably in either Inverness or Inverness Park area, most likely Inverness Park at the top of Drake's View Drive. Uh, so we're super looking forward to that. Um, I think I've mentioned to you guys before, but we actually now have dates on the calendar. Um, Open Roads with Doug McConnell. It's a um, NBC show that he has throughout the Bay Area. He is doing an um, an episode on MWPA. He's also doing an episode on the Fire Foundry. And so we have been going through um, the scripting and not quite storyboarding, but um, outlining what our episode is going to look like. And we've identified March and April dates for the video work and um, they look to air it twice, once in the end of May and once in August. So we'll be able to be right at the beginning of fire season and then somewhat in the middle of fire season. So we're um, pleased about the timing. We're pleased about the opportunity to have Doug McConnell talk about the MWPA. And finally, you may notice when you walked in um, accessibility buttons on our doors, we've uh, worked with Saris Regis in the County of Marin to increase the accessibility to our offices. For um, the offices next door, since it's a shared office with um, the County of Marin, they split the cost for the install installation of the accessible doors, and then we're paying for the cost of these doors. It's just a um, continued effort for our the increase of our um, access um, inclusion to our meetings. This meeting space will likely receive some uh, other upgrades to help those with hearing impairments. And with that, I'll take any questions. Great. Thank you, Mark. Questions? Catherine. Going back to the insurance. Okay, I just received a call from someone who is a friend of mine in Nevada. She just got notified that she's going to lose her insurance. They're not going to write her insurance. So she asked me to ask you all, what can, can MWPA or Nevada Fire Protection District do something to help her? She needs to tear down a juniper tree in the backyard. So question one was, can she get help through a grant from MWPA? And question two was, after she does that, is there a way for someone to certify that she's safer and maybe can get her insurance back? The, 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 for all the residents, the best solution is always to reach out to their local fire department for that support. Okay. And it's a common, it's a common um, request from the member agencies. Uh, the grant access would be dependent upon, you know, whether or not we have the available funding. And But number, my third suggestion is, um, if she continues to have challenges, to reach out to United Policyholders. They have a, a great resources to help people that are in those positions to help continue their um, insurance. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Bruce? Yeah, Mark, this is unrelated to your report, but it is, it is a question in regards to work coming our way. Um, the Stanford Project, which was to chronicle the MWPA story, we're in uh, Chapter 2, presumably, um, would there be an opportunity at some point to you to give the board an update on the on the on the status of that project and and what the focus is will be? Well, actually, chapter two is completed. We're just tr trying to find the right agenda space for the the, the student to come and present. We do have it. Um, if you want to watch a preview of it, we do have it up on our website under the news page. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just we're just struggling with agenda time right now. Yeah, no, no good. <laughs> I, I'm just real interested. Thank you. 
And I have a couple questions. I'm wondering if you have any uh, insight on what the magnitude of the discount would be if uh, a home has been deemed to be um, meeting the wildfire program. I don't. I'm sorry. No, I, that's I, fine. I, I need. To, it's one of those things where we. I and I haven't seen what the um, California Fair Plan right now are the only ones that have published discounts. Mm -hmm. But um, if I had to guess, I would say between five and fifteen percent. If you have everything that's on there, it's supposed to be itemized, though. Uh -huh. Okay, that's pretty generous. I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. With a twenty percent increase, a five percent discount would be better than nothing, right? Yeah, but fifteen is approaching twenty, so yes. that's that's getting to a sweet spot. Yeah. And then um, with the open roads um, presentation, can we? Can we get a copy of that and put it on the website or FireSafe Marin, or is that a copyright issue? No, it actually, um, I can't, I'll have to double check if the whole episode will be available online. However, all of the material that is included in it is, is ours. So all the B-roll, all the other material is ours. And that's part of the, the, the agreement is so that we have resources to use for continued uh, display of what the MWPA is doing. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to have it available, The his remarks and oh, everything, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, public comment on this item, Martina? If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the current agenda item, the executive officer's report, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine to raise your hand if you're joining by phone. And there are no hands for comment. Thank you. Um, bringing this back to the committee for any further discussion. Yes, Catherine. So 30 years ago, I worked with Doug McConnell. It was the opening of the Bay Trail, San oh. Francisco Bay Trail. He's really great. He really walks through everything with you. He's, I, he must be um, my age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he's, he's, his mind hasn't slowed down at all. Though. No, he's great. Thank you. Great. Well, we're all looking forward yeah, to that. For sure. Number six, consent calendar. The opportunity for public comment on the consent calendar item will occur prior to the committee's discussion of the consent calendar. The committee may approve the entire consent calendar with one action. Um, there's only one item on the consent calendar. Um, Martina, pub any public comment on the consent calendar? If there are any members of, of the public wishing to speak on the consent calendar item only, please raise your hand in the reactions or press star nine if you're joining by phone. And there are no hands for comment. Um, do any committee members wish to pull the one item from the consent agenda? <laughs> we have a motion, please, to approve the consent calendar. I'll make a motion to approve consent. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Number seven, action items. A, Defensible Space Alliance request for MWPA to employ two senior wildfire mitigation specialists. Mark. Yes, and I'll, I'll go back a little bit in history, and that is in the development of the MWPA. One of the models that was explored and actually written into the JPA language was that the MWPA would actually employ all of the defensible space evaluators in the county. Uh, however, uh, it was realized as we were writing the JPA that um, several member agencies may want to maintain their own inspection programs. There, and you know, our departments, our fire departments, have such a close connection with their communities. It made sense to do that. And then reality set in when the MWPA started, and there were no MWPA employees. It was actually impossible for the MWPA to employ the D space evaluators. Therefore, uh, the opt out is the rule rather than the exception. But knowing how the JPA language was written, we felt it was a good idea and the board approved position descriptions for a senior wildfire mitigation specialist and then the wildfire mitigation specialist position. That way we had those position descriptions already written. We did that in February of 22. That And as that way we were ready if our member agency said, actually, we want you to do this for us. At the time, we didn't do the salary survey because it didn't make sense to do a salary survey if we weren't hiring anybody. Um, but now um, how the D-Space Alliance, which is Southern Marin, West Marin, and Central Marin, 
has grown in complexity and the work that they're doing. Um, a, they're struggling with a little bit of workload piece with only one lead, leading those um, three zones. They're also having some challenges with retention with the salary rates that they're able to pay through County Fire and or Ross Valley Fire, which are the two employers for the D-Space Alliance. So they reached out to us and the letter, their formal letter requesting this um, is part of the packet for the NWPA to employ two of the senior wildfire mitigation specialists. The letter calls them leads, semantics, right? Um, when we did the position descriptions back in February of 22, we called them senior. So um, we have an ongoing um, comp comparison going on. Um, we're probably 80, 90% through that comp comparison. Uh, the holidays have slowed us down a little bit. Um, but once we finalize that comp comparison, we will be bringing it back to the affected member agencies to see if though that fits within what they thought would be the appropriate range. We're also having them compare um, what we wrote as a senior wildfire mitigation specialist to what they would like to see as the lead. And then their intent for funding of this is that they don't want to dip into the D space funding because that's going to be primarily for funding of the, the people doing the inspections and also some D space related projects that they will create core projects within the West, South and Central prorated to the level of effort within those zones to provide the funding for those positions. If you recall, the central zone has been having a, a distinct core project to augment the um, the D space program already. Um, that just shows how much emphasis that they're putting into the D space program. And um, one quick note, while we don't recommend this at this time, there's actually an opportunity at five years for us to balance the 60, 20, 20 spread of 60% core, 20 D space, 20 local. And I know some people have actually talked about, I wonder if that 20 for D space is too small and if maybe we want to increase. We have to, we have to kind of balance that though, because as we mature as an organization, um, the homes, the homeowners are getting much more used to D space and, and valuations. And we've actually seen a trend already that's really positive. We have less findings now. As when we are returning to homes, we are finding fewer things. So that's that's great. So perhaps the workload will balance out. And we won't need to increase that 20%, but we're also evaluating, well, maybe we become more detailed now with our evaluations and a little bit more hands-on. So we're still working on that. Part of this would also include um, an agreement between the MWPA and the member agencies that are involved. And it's, it's a little bit odd since we're all part of the same JPA, but we think it would be best if we put it in writing an agreement of exactly how the roles and responsibilities of these two positions, lines of authority, who's supervising, who's doing this. We want to make it perfectly clear. So when, when we come to the, um, the board, we would come with the full comp comparison. We would come with uh, the proposed agreement. And then if there are no changes to the position descriptions, we wouldn't need to touch them. But if there's recommended changes to the position descriptions, then we would include those position descriptions. And um, when we originally wrote today's agenda, I thought we might be a little bit further ahead than we are. And so I think maybe a modified recommendation from staff on this is for the executive committee to vote to have us continue down the path that I've outlined to you to bring it to the full board in later this month. Questions? Catherine? I'm really glad you explained, you know, who reports to who, because that was confusing to me. So does that mean that the five agencies that are in this alliance, the jurisdiction of the people we're hiring will stay within the jurisdictions of those five agencies only? So it's, it'll be a blend. So right now, Ross Valley Fire employs the lead. Marin County Fire employs the vast majority of the D-Space evaluators with Southern Marin, I believe, employing one. And that's their contribution to the program. The only thing that'll change is that Ross Valley will be removed from employing the lead and the MWPA will step in to employ the leadership. One senior whims will be on more of the administrative side of the shop. And one of the senior whims would be more on the operational side of the shop. 
the inspectors themselves would still continue to work for the same member agencies they work for now. And then that's why we would need that agreement since it's, it, you know, someone from the MWPA will be providing supervision from an agency outside of the MWPA. Yeah. Any other questions? Bruce. No. Dennis. Thank you. That's okay. Um, Mark, just uh, looking at this item, wondering if this is a, a next work plan item, so it wouldn't start till next budget year, or is it going to be a mid-year adjustment? Uh, great question. It would be uh, a mid-year adjustment since the inspection season starts before the, the next fiscal year. Um, based on the funding that we have from the Central Marine Corps project last year, we feel that the between the agency, we, we feel we have the budget space for that. Anybody else? Bruce? So, so Mark, I'm, I'm assuming that these, these would be FTEs, full-time positions? Correct. And so where, where I get a little confused is that um, all the members have, a, some members have a different model in regards to who the defensive space inspectors are and, and management that, that the good, the body of, uh, of defensive space inspectors, I think in this zone, this, these zones that we're talking about are temporaries, aren't they? Aren't they seasonal inspectors? Is that correct? And so if, if that's, if you could just clarify for me, um, you know, the supervisor employee and then, and then the population throughout the year. And just just how how this is going to work, it would be helpful for me. Thank you. So the current arrangement has some full time in, um, inspectors, very few. Well, it was one at Southern Marin and one or two at County Fire, and then the lead position that's been employed at Ross Valley Fire has been an FTE, and so we we would be just transferring that one FTTE over into the MWPA with the addition of one more. I was wondering if we are thinking about increasing the amount of money for defensible space, would that require an amendment to the JPA agreement? Yes, but there, there's, an, uh, there's a clause in the JPA agreement that recommends that, uh, that evaluation at five years. Okay, great. And then in terms of the, um, the, the new people being MWPA employees, do you and your staff have the capacity to supervise those people? So uh, not to add to Ann's workload, the two employees would um, fall under my supervision. And what we have done is that goal one is primarily Ann's responsibility. And then uh, goals three and five, for the most part, have been fallen un under mine. And then we kind of share between goals two and four. Um, I can outline all the names of the goals if you like, but veg management, basically goal one, goal threes and goal five is grants and D space. They have been falling under me, uh, public education goal four has been both of us and evac improvements has been, again, goal two has been the both of us. So we currently, we have, I feel that I have the bandwidth to be able to supervise the two employees. However, if the program expands beyond that, we may need a, a peer to Ann as a planning and program manager for DSpace and grants. Okay, thank you. And then perhaps when this item comes in front of the board, you could have a like an org chart that that sets out how this is going to be organized to help people better understand it. You bet. Great. Rachel. So Mark, one more question. Um in terms of so the these two positions would be shared within these identified jurisdictions. And then the other ones would continue with their current model. Does that make it basically equal or does it offset where the other jurisdictions feel that they're not as supported in terms of their staffing? I would, I would surmise that the, the other two zones will feel no difference at all. We're just, all we're doing is transferring the leadership from the Ross Valley Fire um, position to two positions within the MWPA. Their sole focus will be just, you know, Kathleen Cutter is the person that's in the position now. Kathleen is well integrated with San Rafael program and the auto program as a, as a, as a, a, a partner. And I would imagine that a similar relationship would, would continue regardless of who their quote official employer is. Right. So it's more of an administrative change than an actual 
functional change. Correct. And part of it is to ensure that we can continue to um, retain the, the, the quality in the senior positions. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Bruce. Um, office space. Where where will the position? Reside? We already have the office space. They wouldn't. They're down at Suite two seventy. Wouldn't here, change here in this office. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I just. Yeah. Sorry about that. And I'll add. I'll add the office space piece to it as well to the staff report. Okay. Thank you. Great, Martina. Any public comment on this item? If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the current agenda item, the D Space Alliance request for MWPA to employ two senior wildfire mitigation specialists. Please raise your hand in the reactions. And for those joining us by phone, please press star nine to raise your hand, star six to unmute yourself. And there are no hands for comment. Thank you. Bringing this back to the committee for discussion and a motion. Any discussion? And, and if I can modify the motion, vote, modify the motion to being um, to vote to approve the staff to continue down the path that I've outlined with the, the salary survey, comparison of position descriptions, and a draft agreement to bring to the board in January 18th. Do you think that'll be ready by January 18th? I That's think so. That's two weeks. I think we'll get there. Okay, okay. With that- I'll move. Then thank I'll you. Him. Second. Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Item 7B, approval of Genesis Protect EVAC, formerly Zone Haven subscription, including a traffic modeling component, Mark. This is a uh, very exciting and um, another example, in my opinion, of what the MWPA was created to do. I'm going to give a little bit of background again. When we started the evacuation ingress egress risk assessment, actually predating the MWPA, we thought we were going to need to create an evacuation management platform. But at the same time, the MWPA was being drafted in language. Zone Haven came about and created that evacuation management platform. So we were able to modify the um, evac ingress egress risk assessment to exclude that. And we entered into a subscription with Zone Haven in February of 21. Approved by the board, MWPA funding that subscription with the public safety agencies implementing the operational aspect of that evacuation management platform. We worked out a, a balance of invoicing for the MWPA to pay for the full invoice for everywhere but Tiburon and Belvedere. Tiburon and Belvedere has a separate invoice with Zone Haven, but it's a single countywide implementation. So the taxpayers don't see any lines of delineation. Uh, subsequently, Genesis um, acquired Zone Haven. And so the product that was called Zone Haven is now called Genesis Protect EVAC. It was always um, Zone Haven's intention to add traffic modeling to their product, but it ended up being a very difficult challenge for them. And then a company called Ladris Artificial Intelligence or Ladris AI created a pretty phenomenal traffic modeling tool. At about the same time Ladris AI was finalizing their tool, Google pre presented a, a comprehensive traffic study for the city of Mill Valley, we even talked about that traffic study, both at board and the um, exec committee meetings. It was a um, very thorough article in the Marin IJ about it. And um, they learned a ton. They were able to modify some of their evacuation plans based on that study. One thing about that study, though, is a single snapshot in time. So that's, that's the downside to that study. Since that study was publicized, we've had many agencies come to us and go, hey, can we get Google to do this study for us? And quite frankly, Google is not interested in doing that study for all the other communities in Marin, let alone everywhere else. And so that's when Ladris came about. And I was able to see a couple different demonstrations of Ladris. And I'm going to outline the demonstrations that I received to you today. We will have a full demonstration available for us at the board meeting on the 18th. Um, and then Ladra started talking to Zone Haven. Zone Haven started working out an agreement, or not Zone Haven, Genesis started working out the agreement. And um, we went to the police chiefs. We gave a uh, full presentation to the police chiefs. They immediately fell in love with it because um, we didn't want to embark upon this 
um, subscription if the police chiefs weren't interested in using this tool because they're the ones that need to implement this tool. They fell in love with it. We gave a presentation to Office of Emergency Management. They loved the idea. It came to Advisory Technical Committee, went to operations. They love it. Um, uh, Chief Navarro from Mill Valley, the recipient of the Google study, calls this the Google study on steroids. Uh, Chief Tubbs from Southern Rim Fire calls this the Holy Grail. And when we voted for this, Chief Weber um, didn't just say yes. He said an enthusiastic yes. Um, now, let me describe what this is. This takes all of the avail publicly available data. And what Ladris is super excited about is that we have some of the best publicly available data to inform this artificial intelligence traffic modeling tool. We take the zone haven or our evacuation zones that we have already created. It's embedded in there. Now we can click this zone, that zone, that zone, and say, this is the evacuation route or evacuation zones that are on our order. This is where we want them to go. And it can use lifetime data to say how long it's going to take to evacuate that zone. Or we could say, this is the 4th of July. And it'll tell us what type of evacuation times that we may have. We could say, all right, a tree just fell down over this road and has blocked this route. It'll tell us what it's going to take to evacuate everybody. So this is a planning tool. You can set up scenarios. You could say how many vehicles you anticipate, or we can use historical averages on how many vehicles you would anticipate per residence. It uses all the, the information that we have that's publicly available, how many residents there are, approximately how many people are in those homes. But the where Chief Tubbs calls this the holy grail is that it also takes in lifetime modeling. So during an emergency, not only will we have the projected, but they will be able to, the, the, the Ladris will um, takes into account the actual traffic that's going on during the emergency to give us ETAs. So let's say we chose, the, the incident commanders chose to evacuate three zones. And then we also have fire modeling saying the fire is going to get to these three zones in two hours. And we will be able to compare, all right, are we going to get these people out in time? It could help the incident commanders to modify their evacuation decisions. They may decide, you know what, we are on the right pace, or we may need to increase our pace of evacuate because normally we'll stagger it. We'll do an evac. If the fire is coming this way, we'll do an evacuation order here, an evacuation warning, and then we'll move this one to an order and these people down to a warning. It, that will help us inform that, but it also will allow us to lifetime monitor the traffic so that we know where we have some trouble spots, where we may need to put some um, law enforcement. Uh, we would even be able to lifetime model if using Mill Valley as an example, if we did contraflow on Blackdale, this is what the change is gonna do. Uh, if we were gonna do contraflow on Third Street and Santa Fe, well, Third Street's one way, so we can't do contraflow on that. Um, how about Sir Francis Drake? <laughs> so um, it, it's just a phenomenal tool. Um, Stephen Torrance from uh, the Office of Emergency Management has volunteered to be the, the primary uh, driver of the implementation. Ladris has already reached out to us to, to set up a timeline for that implementation. And then um, the Operations Committee asked Chief Navarro if he'd be willing to give um, continual updates um, about the law enforcement implementation of this product. And he said, absolutely. The, the price tags looks high when you look at it. Um, our previous subscription for Zone Haven was $73,000 a year. That was three years ago. So if you look at the equivalent of that, it's 81900 for what we had maintained. If you consider cost of um, inflation, that's actually a, a reasonable price. The the traffic AI, the, the artificial intelligence for modeling, is another $126,000 a year, which seems like a big price tag. Um, a reminder, this is completely within the guidelines of the MWPA's language for Measure C ex expenditures. And if you think about what a one-time traffic study like this would cost for just one community, it's far less than a, that, that amount. But this is an ongoing traffic study that can be done in 10 to 15 seconds for the lifetime of the subscription. Um, so, like I said, we'll have uh, Leo um, Zlyman from Ladris giving us a live presentation. He doesn't just do a PowerPoint. He actually goes into the tool and runs through it, and then you actually see the live time processing that this artificial intelligence does. 
and um, 10 to 15 seconds is actually accurate. Sometimes it punches it out before he even has a chance to stop with his filler time that he's got going. It's a pretty amazing tool. And so um, the request from staff is that the executive committee make a recommendation to the full board that that they approve the, the, the extended subscription. Questions about this? Rachel. Um, is the Ladgers component was the Genesis component, is that an add-on or is it all in one now? It's an add-on. It's an add-on. And are there other add-ons that Genesis is starting to look at? Genesis um, actually has, um, LRAD is now a Genesis product. Um, an equivalent to Everbridge is a Genesis product. So they have a lot of different arms within Genesis, yes. Okay. So we're sort of, and we have some of those already, or, or we only have zone, those. Well, we have LRAD. LRAD. And, and with some of our zones that we are funding, but the operational aspect of it transfers over to um, OEM. Okay. So I'm just thinking maybe down the road, there would be an opportunity to look at all the different, because it sounds like everything's going under one umbrella of Genesis, that we relook at the full contract that we have with them versus all the individual pieces. Um, it might be an opportunity for savings or not. Uh, and yeah, I agree. We, um, if you if you saw the quote, we're actually getting a 30% discount on it, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, I would argue that, the, the the I forget what Genesis calls it, but the equivalent of Everbridge. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that would be a, a, an appropriate MWPA expense, but if if that could be, since it's all in one county, a way to create more. Right, right. Um, in terms of one of the things we get a lot of questions about is residents wanting to do the evacuation practice. And will this provide us an additional opportunity? Because we haven't been really proactive in terms of doing the evacuation practice and for lots of different reasons. But one of the areas that I think that would be helpful to actually, if possible, to use this, and I know there's a simulation, but residents like to have the touch and feel, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so if there's a way of the, to actually do that, but also to give the first responders an opportunity, because to me, that's the the practice that we want to see happening. And I don't haven't necessarily seen that as much in place as the conversation about the residents wanting to talk about the evacuation practice. So if this is going to provide another an opportunity for us to explore that more. Well, I think it um could it, the opportunity's always been there, right? It is just a matter of of taking advantage of that opportunity. And think put my old deputy chief hat on I, and wanting to be able to see the lifetime aspect of it during an exercise. Yeah, that could be powerful and that could help motivate agencies to do that. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Thank you. Anybody else? Catherine. So thinking this out, um, this is kind of in perpetuity. I mean, once we get going with this, it's going to stay. So which means that we hope, <clears throat> hopefully we'll have another proposition pass so that we can continue to pay because the agencies will become dependent on it unless there's some kind of competitive function or, uh, you know, with Genesis, I guess. Um, and what I'm saying is that I also serve on Mira and one of the problems is monopoly. So, <clears throat> so you're stuck with the system that you buy into because of the way it's set up. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. In this case, we're getting a 30% discount. We're on, in, on the innovative technology but these are all things in the future that concern me. We need to keep it going for the agencies. And also, um, I kind of, Rachel sort of hinted at this, um, maybe in the future, there'll be another organization that could compete with them and, you know, see, see if we're getting this, the best deal from the best contractor. Yeah, and, and I'll fall back on my experience with Mira that uh, the Mira system is, has a, a, a lifespan of and so much more infrastructure than what this we have a, this would be a three-year subscription and right now ladris is the only artificial intelligence traffic modeling in three years at the rate of technology definitely could change and the good news is the infrastructure behind this product is not like the infrastructure of mira so it would be relatively easy for us to transition to a competitor if they have a better product for a better price anybody else bruce 
Mark, I, I I find myself thinking, you know, this is this is big stuff, and I I, I I'm excited about it. I, I think it's really important for us that that we invested money in the ingress and egress study also, and we did traffic modeling. Um, was the Lazar system the system used to do the traffic traffic modeling on the in the ingress egress study or? So that's a, that's an awesome question. No, it, it wasn't because it wasn't available. We, the traffic modeling that was done was for the evac ingress egress risk assessment was done by um, UC Berkeley. Okay. And um, with background traffic, average background traffic. So it was, it's more of like the Google study where it was a single snapshot in time mm -hmm. and it assumed all roads were open and where the Ladris product allows us to um, manipulate those scenarios and make it dynamic. And actually in um, great segue in February, we'll be bringing a proposal to the board. We're bringing it to the ATC and operation for tasks five and six. If you remember, we put a pause in the evacuation ingress egress risk assessment after task four, we are bringing a proposal for tasks five and six to the board in February that will include Ladris as a component in partnership with Sonoma Technology. Okay, yeah, I, I just, th this is all new to me and this, this is not my field of expertise, but um, it, it really, I think it addresses Catherine's questions in regards to who does this kind of work and what what's the potential competition? Are we getting a good deal? Uh, but just as a practical, it's really yeah. the same. Um, and I, I may ask a question which may or may not have any relationship to this, um, but, but in the ingress and egress, um, study, we we looked at notification and we looked at uh, dead spots and and if you will, uh, uh, with within within membership here. And um, I'm you know, we've got these two, I understand this this project, which I'm supportive of, ingress and egress, and then the work that's going to go on with ingress and egress notification and addressing communications in those dead spots. Uh, do, do we see these folding together here within this coming year or within the next two years to make the, sure that the, the task five and six component. Yes. Not so much the traffic modeling piece. No, yeah. Not the traffic modeling, but, but as, as, yes. as to the notification piece, yes, that this will circle around and, and sync up with, with this, this technology, with this. Absolutely. Team. Okay. Thanks. I, yeah. It's real important that uh, we get, as we know from our ingress, egress study, notification is critical early, you know, and without, People can't act. So, anyway, thank you. I have one more. Yeah, Rachel. Uh, Mark, the timeline implementation. Sorry if I missed that. We haven't built it yet. Okay. We've just um, started the conversation with the two implementers at Ladris. I've got them connected with Stephen Torrance. And so they're going to start working on the implementation timeline. Are we thinking it's like, do we have a general? Is it three months? Is it a half a year? Is it a year? I, I think, don't hold me to this, but it's going to be on the shorter side than the longer side. Okay. And are we the first agency to use this? Through the Zone Haven. So Zone or whenever I say Zone Haven, Genesis. insert Genesis Protect. Um, Genesis Protect has become the sole distributor ongoing. We are the first customer through that avenue. However, there's about 10 other counties that have um, started using the Ladris product. And I actually had um, friends of mine who were in those counties where they were implementing calling me up going, Mark, you got to get in on this. This is good stuff. Great. Great. Thank you. So I just have a basic question. How do they get the live time traffic monitoring? In the same way you're Google, the same way, you, yeah, you're, when you're, when you're, when you're going to a concert in the city and it tells you how long it's going to take to you to get there, same, same data. <laughs> this is wild stuff. Mm -hmm. It, it could, and um, we did this, this had this, this conversation back in February of 21 or January of 21. If we were to try to do a cost share, it would be really complicated to start, start working out what the percentage of time compared to a wildfire uh, versus a flood versus a tsunami. And Quite frankly, I was I was struggling with trying to realize what type of 
evacuation scenario would need this comprehensive traffic modeling. Earthquake obviously is regional, but we don't evacuate during earthquakes. We, we, we people shelter in place and then we move people around after the event. Um, flooded flooding is far more isolated. Tsunami again, far more isolated. Um, if it was terrorist events, it tends to be more isolated. So um, it would be really hard to come up with a percentage and I, um, staff recommends that it, it, this falls within the alignment of the Measure C language. Any other questions? Okay, Martina, public comment on this item. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the current agenda item, item 7B for the approval of Genesis Protect EVAC, formerly Zone Haven, subscription inclusive of a traffic modeling component. Please raise your hand in the reactions. For those joining us by phone, press star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute yourself. And there are no hands for comment. Thank you. Bringing this back to the committee for final discussion, Dennis. Thank you, uh, Mark. I'm remember in the staff's discussion, there was some discussion about sharing this with outside agencies other than JPA members. And I just wanted to float this idea. It's not part of the agenda today is I think our members, our JPA members should benefit from the discount. But when we transfer that to other agencies, they should not. And I just wanted to place, place that seed that I think it would be appropriate that, you know, we may charge the list price to anyone that wants to use the the system that we've built because the discount really should be for our members. So agreed. And um it's like the original implementation, Tipper on a bill, but it will have a separate invoice. But a seamless implementation. Any further discussion? Can we please have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. What am I recommend? Uh, recommend where am I? Uh, receive report, provide feedback to staff and recommend approval board of directors for the Genesis product. Um, I think it's to recommend that the board approve the Genesis protect EVAC subscription, okay. including the traffic modeling components. Uh, Thank yeah. you, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Number eight, Board of Directors Agenda Review, the draft agenda for the Board of Directors January 18, 2024 meeting. Mark. And as you can see, the agenda is a full agenda. So we will be working hard with all the people that are doing presentations to make sure that uh, they're brief and that we can get this done in the two hours. Scrolling through the agenda, um, I'm gonna highlight a couple of things. We will be um, um, producing the annual report for the board's approval. I'll highlight some of the key points during my executive officer's report. Um, but one thing I'll mention now is that um, we've hit the pace that we I th we feel that we need to be at. In fact, we expended more than we took in in 22-23. We were able to do that because of previous years unspent money and also grant acquisitions. We have probably another year or two of unspent revenue to continue to expand. And, re and I think it's important that we emphasize that we should be spending that money. We should not be sitting on that money. That is money that the taxpayers have said we want put towards wildfire mitigation. So it's the responsible thing for us to responsibly spend it. So we will continue to do that. Um, if we don't, uh, are, if we are not successful in grant acquisitions, we're actually probably gonna have to slow our work down a little bit in, in a couple of years, but we will continue to be aggressive with our grant acquisitions. Citizen Oversight Committee um, membership appointments. We have three positions that we'll be bringing to the board. Uh, we had three applicants. And as you see with the next uh, agenda item, Lucy Dilworth, um, who filled the fire prevention role, chose not to reapply. So we'll be acknowledging her participation as one of the original members of the COC and also a member of the grand jury that helped um, craft our language. And the, the last item on consent is our master services agreement. This is an, a major streamlining effort. Uh, if you remember, we put out a request for quotes and proposals for various services, whether it was landscaping services, timber operators, um, herbicide application, uh, restoration. And so we brought in, I think, 10 qualified applicants put in proposals. We went through a, a, a grading 
process. We had different categories of what contractors services they could provide. And so we'll be bringing the master services agreements to the board for approval. Um, and this will allow us to quickly place contractors onto projects. I'll use the San Rafael San Anselmo uh, fuel reduction zone as a perfect example. Instead of city of San Rafael going through the procurement process to put a licensed timber operator on that project, we've already gone through a competitive process. We will be able to place that operator right on to the project rather than San Rafael doing a procurement, paying the invoice, and then sending us the invoice so we can reimburse San Rafael. So um, we're super excited about this. And I, I know our member agencies are pretty excited about it. Um, the finance report will be a combination of December and January, and we'll give her uh, standard fiscal year work implementation plan. We already did DSpace, Genesis. Uh, Citizens Oversight Committee report, if you remember in November, uh, we presented to you and gave you the report um, at the exec committee. We had it on the agenda for the November meeting, but due to the length for the um, project specific analysis for the San Rafael San Anselmo project, we had to move it from the, the November meeting to the December, January meeting. So all the recommendations that came from exec committee during November have been implemented into the presentation for the January. Um, oh, I skipped, mm -hmm. I skipped actually um, the presentation from the wildfire commission report. Thank you. This is the federal um, commission that we actually tried to get Bruce onto, but they they didn't accept Bruce onto the commission, unfortunately. Um, however, so this is was a close to a fifty person commission looking at the wildfire problem throughout the the nation. Um, very comprehensive report. Uh, I have written an executive summary that um, touches on the aspects of the report that I think are consistent with the MWPA's mission. And gave you a snippet of that, and it's still eight pages of an executive mm. summary, and um, with with links and suggestions if you want to dig further into particular items. However, Chief Bob Roper, retired from the Ventura County Fire Department, who is a really good friend of Marin County, was a member of the commission, um, and he offered to give us a, a presentation from a, a commissioner's perspective, and um, he emphasized to us that. At that commission, the MWPA was held up as an example numerous times, and this is a, a federal commission. So um, he's the one that came to us and said, hey, Mark, would you like me to come present? So um, we had originally targeted November, but then um, the commission actually stole him on that meeting, and which ended up being a long meeting anyway. So that worked out for the better. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And then the last one I'll, I'll mention for the uh, agenda is we'll have Josh Dimon come and give an early preview of the results from the wildfire um, risk perception survey that we have been uh, working with our community-based organizations and the data and the, that we've received from it and the dashboard he's building from it. And the dashboard's pretty incredible. You'll be able to pick different questions and then also pick different demographics and see how they answered those questions. And we have Josh giving presentations to the ATC and ops as well with the request that they use this information to help frame projects for the 24, 25 work plan. And then we are also going to be using, we as MWPA staff will be using that data to help create um, a project that's going to increase our outreach to our underserved populations and that you and, and directly reach out to our community-based organizations and ask them to be partners with us in that implementation of, of that type of project. What it looks like yet, we are not 100% sure, but we're earmarking a project for that based on the preliminary results. Questions about the January 18 board agenda, Rachel? I'm wondering, that's a lot. <laughs> I know. I'm wondering if we need to set the expectation that either the meeting might go longer than the two hours or we start earlier, or I don't, I don't know if there's a way to, I think the re, real being realistic, we're not going to get through that in two hours. So one question for you is, would you think the board would be comfortable with the D space conversation being a consent item, or do you think it needs to be a full presentation? 
I, I think it's fine on the consent. I do too. And if someone has questions, they can pull it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that, that would be one way to shorten the meeting. Right. I think that's, yeah, I think that's important. And, and I think informally we can try to map out the time of each item to ensure that it is from three to five. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, public comment, Martina, on the January 18th board agenda. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak on the January 18th board of directors agenda, please raise your hand in the reactions. And for those joining us by phone, please press star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute yourself. And there are no hands for comment. I, I was just thinking, Mark, when you were mentioning the Federal Wildfire Commission report, it might be great to have someone from Jared Huffman's office listen in to the presentation. Yeah. Great. Any other comments, Bruce? Yeah, just um, in, in our startup meetings over the first couple of years, we had several meetings that went over. And one, one of the rules that, that we came to agree upon is, is that to ask presenters not to, not to repeat what's in the packet. And so I, I think a streamlining suggestion would be, for example, the, the Fire Safe Marin reports, they're beautiful, you know, and they're, they're, they're clear and concise that we really don't need to hear it again. Um, so I, I would just think that, you know, that we would look to, to, to please put in the packet that which is in print, and then let's ask presenters not to re perhaps just ask, are there questions or comments from the board as opposed to reiterating information that the board has presumably already read? You and bet. Public. You bet. And the uh, underlying assumption of that is that it means that each board member needs to do the necessary work. Absolutely. To I think read that's one of, the our, one of the premises of uh, yeah. our presence and participation. So maybe we need to reiterate that, you know. When we distribute the agenda packet, we can we can remind folks of that. Yes. We're not going to spoon feed. Yeah. Yeah. Those and, days are over. And, and, <laughs> um, the I, I intend to send the executive summary for the wildfire commission report probably a week or so in advance. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Any any other comments? Number nine, committee members' requests for future agenda items. Anything? Number ten, adjournment. We will now adjourn the meeting, and I look forward to seeing you all on January eighteenth. Thank you. Thanks for attending, Megan. Well done. Yeah, Megan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to.